What's up, boys? Today, we are going to talk about how to top tick, how to bottom tick, because I know I often send out levels, and these levels work out, and I'm sure a lot of you guys are just wondering how I'm able to do it, and there's a lot of people gatekeeping out there, so I figured I'm going to just show you guys one of the various different ways that we use to top tick and bottom tick. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So the first tool that I want you guys to know and get comfortable with is called the FIB, also known as OTE. Um, these are the settings that I have. You can find the FIB in the top left in forecasting and measurement tools. And um, no, sorry, you can't. It's right above that. It says Fibonacci and you have all of these different FIBs that you can use. FIB retracement, that's what we use. That's what I favor it. When you're on the FIB, you're going to right click, you're going to go to settings, you're going to put all of this in and you're going to save it as a template. All of these numbers, pause the video, make sure you have all of these levels. Um, then just save as and then FIB. And then every single time you make a FIB, well, it's going to look like that. Um, and today we're going to be talking about standard deviations using the FIB. So if you take a look right here, we have the normal FIB range and you can see we got 0 0.786, 0 0.705, 0 0.618 and 0 0.5. These are the ones that you boys are most likely used to and probably what you use so far. Today, I'm going to introduce these to you. Negative two, negative 2.25, negative two and a half, negative three, negative three and a quarter, negative three and a half, and negative four. All of these are extremely important, and I think every single trader should have them in their arsenal. So, how do we use it? Well, I'm going to show you some examples of trades that we have taken and levels that we have gotten based off of the FIB and OTE. The way I like to use it, and this isn't the only way to use it, but this is the way that I use it. Um, I like taking the FIB from the low to the high, right? And I like knowing that this FIB is valid. What I mean by that is in this FIB, we came up, we came back down, we rebalanced the leg, and we continued up. That's why this FIB retracement is valid. This FIB retracement would not be valid if we just came up, retraced, came up, dumped. If this low gets taken, FIB retracement is no good. That didn't happen here, so let's look. You got all of these levels up here, and don't mind these, but if you mark out every single level here, and we take a look at what price does at all of them, you're going to come and see if we go all the way to the right. Boom, 848 to the tick. That's today, by the way. Um, and yes, some of them work, some of them don't work. How do you know which ones work and which ones don't work? Well, you have to combine different confluences with it. You can't just blindly take a FIB level. You have to look, you have to make sure liquidity is being swept. You have to make sure there's an SMT. We're tapping into a high time frame PD array, any of that, right? And this is just one example. I'm going to show you guys some more examples. And I do this every single morning before market open based on my bias. If I'm bullish on the day, I'm taking it from the high to the low and it's going to give me the, sorry, from the low to the high. If I'm bullish on the day, I'm taking it from the low to the high and that's going to give me the extensions at the top. Potential spots where I can take profit or even go short from for a mechanical setup um, gives me my take profit levels areas to watch out for very good I like it and if I'm bearish I do the opposite I take the high to the low and then it gives me the extension legs down here now if we take a look 
negative 3.25 right here to the tick. Well, why is this one better, Ivan? I'm glad you asked. Five minute. Well, number one, for starters, we are in a five minute fair value gap. Right there. Okay. Number two, we have an SMT at the low that formed right after. If you take a look at ES, don't mind this trade. Um, if you take a look at ES, you'll see that ES took this low, then buyers stepped in and ES pumped. And then what did we do? Well, after this got hit, which is negative 3.25 of this range, I take this range and I mark it out from, well, the low to the high. Why? Because I'm bullish today. This is today, by the way. Um, I'm bullish today. So low to the high. I don't believe price is going to go lower than this. But if we take a look, we get our levels. And if we play it out and we just take a look at what price does here. Number one, taps this first level at 765, rejects it a few times, goes up even higher. Comes up to negative 2.5. Rejects it. And honestly, it holds it for, for a good time. Then obviously, we've got market, right? Whatever, blah, blah, blah. And that was today. Now, I'm going to show you guys a few more setups that happened today. Today, the market dumped, right? And after it dumped, take a look at this. We have the low to the high, right? Price rebalanced the leg. So boom, boom. I need this to happen. I need us to tap 0.5 of the range. If it doesn't tap 0.5 of the range, not valid. And maybe that's just one of my rules, but that's what I found to work the best. Other people may say other things, but this is what I find to work for me. So taps 0.5, this is valid. Next, what are we looking for? Negative two, negative 2.25, negative two and a half. Zoom out. Look at this. Doesn't look crazy, right? To the tick. This is literally an hour and 20 minutes ago. These extension zones, they work. They are so helpful and everybody's got to be using them, but it all comes with trial and error. And if you guys don't believe that you can make profits off of this, I'm about to show you. Oh, these boys filled it up. I'm not going to lie to you. These boys filled it up. Nice. I'm going to show you today's trading profits. All right, boys. So this is my discord. This is today's gains. You take a look. You got bully, bully banked. We've got axe. One loss, one win. My winner outweighed my loser. We got no leads past a funded account. We got Purin with two payouts today. We've got Benji with the top tick. We've got Icy with the two wins. We got Seasick. Now Seasick, Seasick's crazy with it. Look at this. You can't say these levels don't work because they do. And this is a perfect representation of that. This is the exact setup that I was just talking about. Look at this dump and look at this. You can't tell me these levels do not work. But this all comes with trial and error. You guys need to go out onto the chart. You guys need to go to FX replay and you need to practice. You need to practice finding the right range. You need to see how price reacts. And the more that you do it, the better you're going to get at it. I send out the levels in the morning and I'm confident in my levels because I went into FX replay and I back tested for months with standard deviations. And only then was I able to gain, build up the confidence 
to send out the levels in the Discord. And I'm about to show you guys some of the levels that I sent out in the Discord and how it all works. Check this out. Keep in mind these, uh, keep these in mind coming into the week. If price rejects any of these, they are super solid to take shorts off of. First level, 21.511.75. Rejected. Come up to here. Bearish, I send out my levels every single morning and the levels play out. We take a look at this. Take a look. First level up here, 21,972. 21,972.50. Literally the bottom tick. I come here. Look at this. I took, a, I took profits at 974. Look at what happened after. What if you took a buy at that level? Well, you would have bottom ticked this and been able to ride it up. I almost got stopped out here, by the way. This is by no means to brag that I held this whole trade. I almost got stopped out here. I was a few points away from just taking home 140 bucks. But instead, I held it to all of my levels. And I took profits at all of my levels. And you can see at the spots where I take profits, price usually bounces. And this brings me into my next point. When price taps these standard deviation levels you're most of the time going to see some sort of retracement. I'm going to pull up an example from a few days ago. Take a look at this. These are levels that I sent out in the morning, right? This is all off of the standard deviation. Price came up to the first level. What did it do? Rejected it. Boom. Price came up to the second level, ran through, hit the third level, pulled back. Came up, hit the fourth level, pulled back. Then came up to the fifth level, tapped it to the tick right there, pulled back. Came up here, could have top ticked this, boom, pulled back. And eventually our final target was hit. So to sum this all up, number one, find OTE. Two, make sure OTE hits 50%. It can go lower than that. It just cannot invalidate the actual fib leg. It has to tap 0.5 and it has to continue. If it breaks it, it's not the right fib. It's not the right leg. You got to wait. And then you're going to just be using negative 2, negative 2.25, negative 2.5, negative 3, Negative 3.25, negative 3.5, and negative 4. And that, guys, is the rules for standard deviations. At least my rules. I don't know about anybody else's rules, but this is how I use it. If you guys have any questions at all, feel free to comment them down below or join my free Discord community where you can just tag me and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you, boys, for watching. And as always, trade smart, and I'll see you boys tomorrow.